Okay, well, hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Kirsty Meddings. I'm a product manager here at Crossref. Um, and welcome to our webinar today, which will be covering the Crossmark service um, from Crossref. Um, a little bit of housekeeping. I've got about 10, 15 minutes of worth of slides, which will cover what Crossmark is um, and why you should participate in this um, initiative if you're not already. Um, we've got everyone on mute just to make sure that there's no um, audio interference in the background, but we've left time for questions at the end, so please do type questions into the questions box as we go along if you think of them, and I'll pick those up um, when we get to the end. So Crossmark. Crossmark is an additional service from Crossref, um, above and beyond content registration and DOIs. And in essence, it's a button that you put on your content and a set of metadata that you register with us that can tell your readers about the publication status of a piece of content, so whether there have been any updates, um, such as uh, corrections or retractions to that piece of content. But it can also give the reader lots of other information, such as funding information, ORCIDs, publication history. Um, <clears throat> and I'll talk through examples of all of these in the coming slides. So let's start with the key purpose of the Crossmark service, and that's to let the reader know if there are any changes to the status of a particular publication. We know that many things can happen to content after it's been published. It can be corrected, updated, retracted, or even withdrawn. And these things may happen soon after publication, or they could happen months or even years later. So one of the main purposes of Crossmark is to make sure there's a consistent and reliable way for readers to be notified of these important changes. This is particularly important where PDF copies of the articles are concerned. <clears throat> we know that people download and store PDFs on local devices, and if you go back to reference them at any given time after that download, you wouldn't have any way of knowing if a correction had been issued, unless you took the time to go and dig out the page that you downloaded it from, which is probably quite unlikely. But if the publishers added a Crossmark button to their PDFs, you can click on it, and providing that you have an internet connection, it will pop you up a web page. <clears throat> and that web page has the Crossmark box on it, which gives you the latest status. This is what most people see most of the time, confirmation that the document's up to date, there have been no significant updates issued for this particular document, <clears throat> and it has a link back using the Crossref DOI that will always point back to the publisher maintained copy so this one has no updates. The box also tells the reader that if there are any updates in future, they'll be listed below. So getting them used to the idea that if changes happen, this is where they can find out about them. So what this box is doing um, is checking the Crossref database in real time and pulls back the latest status. So even if the article is several years old, it will still know if any updates have been applied since then. On a web page such as this one, it works in much the same way. You see the cross mark button at the top of the article page there. And if you click on that, it pops up the same cross mark box. Um, but this time, we see that there's an update that's been issued for this document. And it gives a link there through to, to the correction notice that's been issued for this particular piece of content. You see that the box has changed to a yellow color to emphasize that there is an update. And all I need to do now is click on the link in the top box there, and it takes me through to the correction notice for this piece of content. Here's another example, again, um, on the landing page on a publisher's website button is over here on the right by the abstract, and this particular article has in fact been retracted. The box is red to highlight this, and there's a link through to the retraction notice. Just to put some definition around what we mean by an update, um, this is something that comes up quite regularly. To trigger a Crossmark status update, the changes to the content have to be um, important changes. Um, significant enough to affect either the crediting or the interpretation of the work. Um, within scholarly publishing, there are a limited set of events that meet this criteria, so we've defined that list of events as follows. These are the 12 defined status update types that can be used in Crossmark. 
these are the things that fall under that definition of affecting the crediting or interpretation of the work. Um, they were drawn up in consultation with a group of our member publishers at the time that Crossmark was launched. Of course, there are other things that could can happen to content that could be considered more minor updates. Um, for example, when a version of record is published after an online early or accepted manuscript has been previously available. <coughs> or um, small changes to typos and so on and so forth. These are not considered significant enough to trigger a warning to the reader via Crossmark. There is a place in the Crossmark box to put information like this that I'll show you shortly. Um, but otherwise, it's only the things that are listed in this list um, that should be used to alert the reader that there's something important enough that they need, their, need to go back and have a look at it. So that's the main purpose of Crossmark, but there's also the opportunity for publishers to showcase a whole load of additional met metadata within the Crossmark box. So here in the authors section, if you have deposited um, ORCID IDs for any of the authors, we will pull those through into the Crossmark box and put a link to the author's ORCID profile in the authors section. If you're registering funding data with us, uh, we will also look for that in your deposits and pull that out into um, the funding section of the Crossmark box. The same is true of licenses. And all of this, if you're already depositing um, this information, funding data, ORCID IDs, license information, you don't need to do anything in particular to make this happen. Once you implement Crossmark, we'll just go and look for that information and pull it into the box automatically. We've also got a, a new section um, as of a little over a year ago, maybe 18 months ago, we started to collect clinical trial numbers. So if you publish in the medical sciences, um, and this is of interest to you, we'd really like to hear from you, what we're doing is taking clinical trial numbers that are <coughs> referenced in articles um, and matching those up with other articles that reference the same clinical trial. So in this particular example, we've got um, an article that's talking about this particular trial that's registered at clinicaltrials.gov. And because we're collecting the clinical trial number as part of the DOI schema, we can then go and look for other articles from other journals or publishers that talk about the same trial and display those as kind of a thread in the Crossmark box. So we think that's a really useful resource for readers who want to see um, <coughs> more information about other people that are talking about the same clinical trial and other results and studies that have been published. And of course, you can link out to all of those other ones too, so the reader can then get to each of the articles that's talked about that trial. And then for any other information that doesn't fit into one of these categories, there's a more information section in the Crossmark box, and that can take any custom metadata that you want to show. So this is a really good example. This particular publisher has um, included the publication history. They've given some information about the peer review process, a link to some supplementary materials, and they've added their copyright and licensing statements. But this is basically a free text box um, for you to put whatever is important to the readers of your publication. Um, you can arrange it as you like. You can choose your section headings, you can put as much or as little information in there as you want. It's also an important part of Crossmark that all of the metadata is available in machine readable formats through our APIs. This is our REST API. Um, we also have an OAI PMH um, access to metadata and anyone can access this um, and query it through any of the metadata fields. This opens up some interesting opportunities for um, propagating this metadata. In this example, which is mocked up, you could see a publisher who's checking their references against um, the Crossref database and finding out when there have been updates to those pieces, to those publications, um, and flagging that in the reference section, which would be a really useful resource to readers. And by putting the Crossmark button on PDFs, you can ensure that wherever those PDFs go, the status updates will follow, and there's always a link back to the definitive copy on a publisher's website. So whether those PDFs are held locally, or whether they're stored in a, a bibliographic management system, if the Crossmark button's there, um, the reader can always be sure that they can check whether anything has changed about that piece of content, um, no matter where they are. In this webinar today, I'm not going to go into detail about what you need to do to actually get set up, the steps that you need to take. Um, we do have a separate how-to webinar for Crossmark that goes through those steps and talks a little bit about um, the deposit schema and what you need to do to get the button 
um, into your PDFs and our websites. But just to touch on the best practices, any Crossref member can participate in Crossmark. Um, we do ask that you deposit good quality and comprehensive metadata because really that Crossmark box um, is at its best when it's really well populated with funding information and ORCIDs. Um, those are not required pieces of metadata for um, members to, to deposit, but we would strongly encourage you to deposit them um, because they hugely enhance um, the utility of the metadata. You need to display the Crossmark button next to the article title and in your PDFs, and of course, you need to commit to letting Crossref know um, in a timely manner if there are updates to your content. There are some additional fees for the Crossmark service. For current content, which is anything published in the past two years, there's an additional 20 cents per deposit fee, and for back file content, it's two cents per deposit. We upgraded um, our Crossmark service. It's been released for about six years now, um, and about 18 months ago, we um, had a complete revamp of it. Uh, we redesigned the buttons based on feedback that the old button we had was very flat and didn't look like something that people should click on. Uh, more importantly, we made the Crossmark box responsive, so it looks really nice on phones and devices, um, which the previous one didn't. Um, the code is uh, much better, doesn't interfere with anyone's websites like the old one used to do, and so we're no longer supporting anything previous to version 2.0. So if you are already running Crossmark but you haven't upgraded to 2.0, please do as soon as you can. And if you are already running Crossmark and you need to replace it, it's very simple. Um, the new code, <coughs> excuse me, the new code that you need to embed in your website is available on our website, um, and then you can just pick a button. Um, we've got several variations on the button um, in different sizes and shapes, and we've also got a grayscale version, so you can choose one that fits best with your website design. Just to give you some numbers, um, this is as of a few weeks ago, 5.4 excuse me, million um, DOIs have our Crossmark enabled, have Crossmark metadata, and those come from 490 of our publisher members. And of those 5.5 million, 57,000 have some kind of a status update. The majority of those, as you might expect, are corrections, but we're getting close to 2,000 registered retractions in our database. And over half of those 5.5 million uh, DOIs have some additional metadata, so information in that more information box that um, gives readers extra background on and context on what they're reading. So, almost exactly on 10 minutes, that brings me to the end of my slides, but I'm very happy to take any questions, so please feel free to type questions into uh, GoToWebinar, and I'll answer them if I can. Um, just to mention again, we will circulate the slides after um, this session, and also if the technology has worked, we've recorded it, so there should be a link to the recording if you want to review that or share it with any of your colleagues. And of course, I'm very happy to answer any questions that you may come up with afterwards. That's my email address on the screen, and there's lots of information on Crossmark on our website. And just to mention again, we do have um, a fairly regularly scheduled how-to webinar about Crossmark if you want some more detail on actual implementation, but also all of that information is available on the website and our support pages. I'll just give it a minute in case anyone's typing questions, trying to toe that fine line between <clears throat> not cutting anyone off if you have a question, but also not um, keeping you uh, if we don't need to.
I have one question about whether we run webinars on introducing metadata. Absolutely. We have a fairly full series of webinars. Um, my colleague Patricia, who's based in our US office, who is our metadata expert, runs um, <coughs> several sessions on um, metadata and how to deposit the best metadata with Crossref. They should all be listed on our website, but I can try and dig out the details. Question asking whether uh, the Crossmark service can be used with preprints. Um, absolutely, they can. Um, similar rules, if you like, would apply um, if a preprint is made available. <coughs> um, and then there are updates to that. Um, the reader still needs to be alerted to that. We do also, though, um, have guidelines for preprints that use our new relations part of our schema. So if a preprint um, is given a DOI, um, and then goes on to publication, um, either in a journal or, or elsewhere, then we do ask that the person who registered the preprint, the organization that registered the preprint, uses um, a relationship in the schema to say that there is a, a new version of this available and linked to the DOI of the publication itself. I hope that answers the question a little bit. A question about um, registering content through our web deposit form and whether you can add crossmark metadata. You can do that at the moment. It's a little bit tricky. It's kind of been hacked in. Um, we are, however, about to launch a replacement for our web deposit form, which is called Metadata Manager. Um, the launch is fairly imminent, I think. We're in beta testing at the moment. Um, and that's a much um, better and more user-friendly service for registering content, and it will have a section for um, entering Crossmark metadata. So although you can do it at the moment, I think I would recommend that you hang on just for a few weeks um, until our new Metadata Manager web service is launched, um, and that will make it very easy to register Crossmark information manually. A question about whether Crossmark is used for um, conference um, posters, conference proceedings. I'm not aware of anyone who's doing that at the moment. Um, it's an interesting question. I'll go off and um, see if I can find out. For the most part, Crossmark's been implemented on journals at the moment. We are starting to see it across books now, which is really good news. Um, and I really see no reason why it wouldn't be applied to conference proceedings, but I haven't seen it um, actually being done so yet. Are there any other questions? As I say, if you think of any afterwards, please feel free to drop me an email. I'm more than happy to help. <clears throat> okay, well, if not, then it just remains for me to say thank you very much for your time this morning, um, and do get in touch if we can answer anything else. Thank you. Bye-bye.